So I'll kind of go in order, I think, just kind of in order of memory. So number one inspiration um, encountered her my freshman year was Mrs. Conley, Elaine Conley. She was my freshman year English teacher and um, she was so, she was kind of like Miss Copley, right? She was super positive, um, very charming. She was one of those teachers where when a student went in, especially as a freshman, right, to be afraid of new campus and high school and, you know, not really knowing who you are and where you fit in, Miss Conley welcomed you and um, everything was always okay in her class. And that was really cool for me because I was very shy. Um, I didn't know like a lot of people, but I just always felt welcomed with Mrs. Conley. So number one inspiration, and it, it was kind of a bummer that she was only with us for a semester because after that she took second semester off. But just for that short time, like she, she left a forever print on me. So, you know, kind of like inspired me, not just as a student, but as a teacher. Um, and then there was Mr. Clark, my junior year, Mr. Russ Clark. Um, one of the most challenging and scariest teachers I've ever had. Um, but I learned so much from him. So, like I said, I was super shy. And um, Mr. Clark didn't take any any mess, right? No fooling around. And so if he called on you for an answer, and I was not one of those students who ever raised my hand, never going to have me raise my hand at all. But if Mr. Clark called on me, you better have an answer. You know, that was just the expectation because he wasn't going to take, I don't know, as an answer and he would wait you out. And so um, I think he was just an inspiration because there was that really high expectation that expectation that everyone could offer something. You know, it didn't have to be the best idea. It didn't have to be, you know, like something stellar, but you had to contribute. You had to give something. And I like that because it taught me that, you know, whatever the situation is, you give something, you give it. You can't just sit back and let life pass you by. So I love that. Um, and then I would, two more, I hope I don't go too long. So my third one um, would be um, Mrs. Gallarducci, Laura Gallarducci, who was my art teacher. And I think that was junior year also. I can't do art at all. <laughs> I can't. I do stick figures. Um, but Mrs. G like taught me how to do art, which was so cool. Um, she taught me how to do something that I never believed I could do. And she helped me to feel really good about it. In fact, all of these years later, I still have some of my high school art. It's silly, but I do. Um, and part of it, I keep it because like I was really proud of what I did in high school and part of it I keep the second memory because she's not with us. And then um, the fourth one would be Mr. Helper, Mr. Dan Helper. And he was an inspiration to me because he was always so incredibly patient and calm. He was kind of almost like the opposite of Mrs. Connolly, who was always like bright and bubbly and you know, woo, here's the day. And, and then Mr. Helber was just like very pragmatic, very patient. Um, he was excited, he was enthusiastic about his subject, but it was just, you know, it was low key. And I love Helber because he um, he never got frustrated by us. I don't know if I learned anything in physics, honestly. <laughs> physics was super hard. And then even when he was on campus here teaching at Foothill, I was always very intimidated by him because I was intimidated by the subject. But I love that he was always so caring and patient with students. And it didn't really matter. Well, it probably did matter whether or not we learned, but um, like there was no judgment there. And so that's why he inspired me.